Today we're taking a look at Sitdown Games' next offering, Dive. In this first impression video, we're going to take a look at the studio that brought you Magic Maze and what they have to offer in their upcoming game about nautical sea diving and the treasures that you can get from it. In Dive, players represent divers from a fictional nation that are all racing to be the first to grab the sacred stone or in this case earn 23 points. A whole pile of clear cells with various nautical accoutrement printed on them are stacked and placed in a holder. Using a set of double-sided number tokens, players simultaneously program their movement, looking down into the ocean board to try to figure out what obstacles or assistance might be on each specific level of the ocean. Using double-sided number tokens, players secretly program their movement for a maximum of five levels each round. They must use the shark side of the token if they believe that that specific level contains a shark. Turtles and manta rays offer movement bonuses, but only the highest bidder that reaches that level gains the bonus. So if a turtle is visible on the third level of the ocean, the player that programs the highest number or stack of numbers on that spot gains the bonus. At the end of each round, five cells are removed from the ocean pile and checked against each player's programs. For every correctly programmed level with no prior errors, players earn one point. Then with the top five sections removed, play continues with the next five until one player earns 23 points. On the surface level, Dive has a very simple rule set. There are other more difficult variants of the game that you can add to it, um, but being a first impression video, it's not anything that I've dived too deep into. That being said, with a simple rule set, what should become apparent is that this is a pretty unique game. First and foremost, just take a second to appreciate the components that are in this box. Now, everything that I have here is prototype components. Um, these are not finalized. Uh, when the game comes to retail, it's probably going to be a little bit more polished than what you see on this table. That being said, this was really, really interesting. The amount of detail and uh, variations on each individual cell was interesting and every game you take these cells and you shuffle them you rotate them and then you put them back into the pile um, so you you're given you're creating a new ocean every time that you play this game and there's no while well, we're used to games being abstracted out right like you you take concepts and it's abstracted out and you see that in the, the drier the game the more abstracted concepts are this game has a fairly simple concept. The, the theme behind it is you're, you're trying to observe down into the ocean so that you can plan accordingly when you go down and swim. Now, rather than roll dice or try to guess what the other players are doing, which, I mean, it, guessing what the other players are doing is certainly part of it, but you're, you're physically having to stand up and look at an ocean deck, look at a, a pre-generated ocean and try to figure out the, the depth of your target. So for a game that has such a simple rule set, the fact that it encompasses so many mechanisms and yet remains such a short runtime is also really interesting and really good in my opinion. The rule set's simple, but encompassing those rules, you've got a visual puzzle, you've got a bidding game, a racing game, and a push your luck element to it. How deep do you dive? And as cool as the art is, it can't hold a candle to the fact that you have a functioning piece of mechanism at the center of the table that is clear cells that you look through. And so while there are elements of this that do feel a lot like Deep Sea Adventure, it takes it to a different level in the sense that you, it's a far more engrossing game, especially if you use the variant, which we did use, where you pull out a cell phone and you can look through, you can hold the light underneath the stack of cards, you can hold it above to the side to try to figure out that depth perception. How that plays out with anybody that is even slightly visually impaired, I'm not sure. This may not be a game that is very easily accessible to uh, a certain group of people. So my initial reaction to Dive is this. It's a game that strips away most elements of long-term strategy and instead replaces it with something that you don't see in many games. And that's something that is truly unique. The experience of standing up over the table, trying to figure out and outsmart your opponents by better discerning an element of the game than them, it makes it feel almost like an escape room game where you're racing against the other people at the table. But that's not quite what it is because you're not necessarily trying to escape, you're just trying to be the first one to the 23 points. I don't know, for me, it's really, really cool. Uh, it's honestly, it's a game that I will probably buy at retail once the, once the retail version hits shelves. Um, 
because it is unique. It's that type of game that you can pull out and play with just about anyone. Uh, this isn't a full review and it's a prototype that I probably have to give back, so I won't be doing any table slapping, but I, I would wager to bet that this is the type of game that would fit that category, a game that has a simple rule set, eye-catching, really intriguing, and uh, just really frustrating when you get something wrong. So that's Dive. If that sounds interesting to you, I know it's going to be hitting stores soon. Um, I think it's well worth checking out, and it's a, it's a game that I am probably going to be picking up myself.